Good morning everyone and welcome back to Craft Eccentricity. Did I forget my name there? No I didn't. Welcome back. Right we're doing KS Craft today and we are going to be doing, yes we are, picking it up off the desk, the heart shape embroidery frame that comes with all of these gorgeous little bitty bobs. You get the scissors, pins, you get needles, you get um, a stitch puller, you even get a needle threader and of course a thimble kind of like shake those bits around there so I've got organized and I've been and cut a few things right so my idea today is you I think you can make this as a shaker if you want to but I just want to make a really pretty greeting card so I'm using this background paper which is from the fragrance pack from Panalisa I don't know if KS Craft sells this uh, cardstock or not on AliExpress. I have printed myself a sentiment. In the embroidery of life, your pattern will remain. And I also popped in some little stitchy hearts there and just trimmed it off with my uh, little guillotine. I really love that sentiment. I made that sentiment up. If you find it anywhere else, let me know. But I'm pretty sure I just made that up. And uh, I just think it's a great sentiment. It's just nice to remind people that they're important, that what they do matters. So that's kind of like the theme for my card. Right, so the base of my embroidery frame is another sheet from that pack. And then I've got all my bitty bobs on this one. This is going to support that paper one that I cut out. And I've also got myself a couple of little buttons. And I may or may not use them. But I'm going to pop them over to here because we need to put them together. And I just don't want to lose them. So this is going to glue onto here to give it some nice sturdiness so that I can pop it up on foam pads. And then in craft card stock, I have cut my embroidery hoop which will sit on top of there and then a scrap of black cardstock I use the top of the die to pull that down which creates the um, tightening screw on the hoop and I just cut a little scrap in black now the reason for that is because I wanted it to stand out but I didn't want to use any more silver because I'd already used so much of it, if you know what I mean. So I'm just basically cutting the screw out. I'm trying to be as straight as I can. There we go. So now I've got this bit. I've got a little bit of a wobble there, but never mind. Which will go onto there just to add a little bit of contrast up at the top and I do have a silver sparkle pen if I want to use that afterwards so let's get stuck in and first of all let's put the hoop together because this bit is really easy so I've got my nice sturdy base hope everyone's going to have a wonderful day today I've been uh, really really busy in the garden last week and this week and uh, planted quite a few trees. I planted um, three apple trees, two pear trees. I planted a giant Fuyu persimmon. And I also planted a pomegranate. And uh, yesterday I planted five muscadine vines. So that's what I've been up to in the garden. I'll just slide that across and get it accurate. And a few weeks ago, I built myself one of those um, really cheap arches that you get from uh, Vivo or Amazon. And it's 30 foot by 7 by 7. Honestly, if you just see me putting that up on my own, I was almost doing the splits, holding one end to the other. And then I was finding all kinds of things to hold up poles while I went down and screwed another one. I was using garden branches, plant pots, um, a garden chair and even had the stepladder out at one point. It was absolutely hilarious. But you know what? I did it. Yeah, I actually got it up. So I'm really pleased with that. And uh, that's what my muscadines are going to be growing on. Right. The next bit is to pop the frame on. 
So I'm just scooting around. Let's get my finger out of the way. And then we're going to pop this down on top of there. So you just want to line it up once again. And make sure you've got it flat. And then that bit can be drying once I've put my little screw top on while I get on with everything else. Oh, and there's one thing that I am using that I didn't show you. All right, let me make sure I've got that on straight. That's that. Get rid of some of my glue there. So that is our little heart shaped frame. Let's see how, there we go. Let's get some focus. Isn't that paper gorgeous? Love it. Right, so that's the frame and we have completed that. Straighten that up a little bit. I'm going to cap off my glue and here's the other bit that we're going to use that I didn't show and I've only got a few left. I need to get some more. So I need to track some down. So I'm going to be using these and I want to use them on my pin heads. So I'm finding my pins. I actually got one of those pearls stuck to my fingers. And my other little one is in here. Those are my scissors. So I've got these two tiny little pins here. Aren't they sweet? Right, now I need to find doodars that will fit on top. So I'm going in for a mooch. Now I think I might want to use that pink one. So I need to know if it's going to fit. And as I explained previously, I actually broke my pickup tool. I mean, it still works. And I've got more over there. It's just about, you know, grabbing them to use them. So I want the, the head of the pin to be 3D. So I really like that. And of course, I've got some purple going on in there and a little bit of yellow and orange. So you can have the heads of your pins, whatever colour you want them to be. And I think I might go yellow, actually. Let's have a look at that one on that, because this pin is slightly larger than the other one. Yeah, I think that's going to look really pretty. And I will, of course, be giving you a close up after. So you'll be able to see all of these details, um, even if you can't see them clearly right now. So just a teeny dot of glue. That's all I need. So that one goes on there. I need to drop that down. And then that one onto there. And now they look quite three dimensional. Really love that. And I like that those uh, abalone um, pearls kind of pick up any shade that you're working with. I'm just making sure that there's no glue oozing. It will stick it to my mat. <laughs> right. Next up, let's do the seam tearer or seam ripper. And I've got one in pink and one in silver. I'm going to cut this off at the handle so that I can have a nice pink handle on mine. So that bit is now surplus to requirements. And I need a little bit of glue onto here so just a couple of little dots you usually find that on foil card stocks your glue will squidgy out all over the place so I need to get that on and then I need to straighten it so I'm just moving that down and around and that is my little seam shredder Hope that you can see that yeah it looks nice with a little pink handle so i've got that and i'm going to see now if i can pick up a pin oh there we go i'm going to see how close we can get there we go isn't that sweet i love that 
And if Bo starts making a noise, it's because uh, he's really excited. He's got a new Nyla bone that looks like a gigantic donut. And he's been up all night chewing on it. Yeah. I think he's kind of living in fear that one of the other two will take it away from him. Because my girly dogs are more kind of masculine than he is, if you know what I mean. He gets bullied quite a lot, bless him. Right, we're doing close-ups on the bits now. This is the thimble. Now, I want to put this on foam. So I've got some foam tape here. And I'm going to pop that on. Because I do want this to be up in the air. And I absolutely love the detail of that. It's just absolutely gorgeous. So that's the thimble done. And as I said, I've got myself a couple of buttons in case I want to put them somewhere. And I've got a couple of needles. And I'm just going to pause for a second while I go and grab my thread. Because I want to thread those up and I'll be right back. Right, so I've got my thread and this stuff, I think I got it from Michael's about five years ago and you get such a huge amount, um, it just lasts you forever. Unless, of course, you're doing some crochet and then it won't last you at all. Right, so I've got myself a couple of big pieces and I'm just going to cut this in half. And then we're going to thread up those needles. As soon as I pick them up. There we go. Should have no problem um, poking thread or twine through these. So there we go. We've got that threaded up. And I do not want that to come unthreaded. So I'm going to have that there. And I'm going to thread the other one up. Because I don't know yet if I'm going to use the big one or the small one. So let's see how easy that is. Might need to give that one a little bit of a squish. There we go. Pull that through. Of course, we can trim our ends off afterwards. Could be that you even want to use both. Both of them. Why not? And then the scissors. Now, scissors can be confusing. People will put them down <laughs> and they'll look at them. And that includes me. And then I have to think about how scissors go. Now, if you always think about your scissors having the ability to close, you'll know that that is the correct way for your scissors. Now, normally you would have a little screw or something on there. So what I'm going to do is use one of my tiniest little pearls in a minute once I've glued those into position. So I'm just going to get a little squidge of glue and I'm going to pop it right there, which is uh, around about where the screw would go. And then I'm going to make sure they're even. Right, the blades are the same distance from each other. And now I'm going to put a tiny little dot of glue there. A very small amount. And it will have to vanish just for a second while it dries. And I can see this tiny little one here and I think it's blue. So I might grab that. Let's put that down and then I'm going to use this one as the screw part for my scissors. There we go. Maybe slide it over a fraction. Right, I'm going to wait a couple of minutes for that to dry because as I said, glue onto a shiny surface always takes longer and I'll be right back and let's put it together. Right, I think everything's sufficiently dry. I've been away and I put foam pads onto the bottom of the heart. So I'm just going to take these off and I want this smack bang in the middle of my card. So I'm just going to eyeball that. And I think that might be it. And I'm pretty sure that that is straight. So I am going to go down there. I'll put some foam on my sentiment. And because it was an odd width, I had to use a couple of skinny scraps. And uh, place those down at the bottom edge. Now, I don't know whether I want that straight on or at an angle. 
think I might go there actually. Yeah, I will. I'll go there. So I've got that in there and now it's kind of like I am committed to where I can put things. So we've got scissors. Everything depends where you want to put it. I've got my lovely thimble. And I've got my uh, seam ripper. All of these little elements can just be dotted around wherever you want them. I can pop my seam ripper down there. Actually, I think that looks nice with one of those buttons. Yes. Now, I'm trying to think about my scissors. My scissor placement. Because the scissors are so pretty and fancy, aren't they? Kind of wondering. Yeah, you can spend forever wondering. <laughs> This is the fun part of it, though. Yeah, I kind of like that, I think. And then I've got my two little pins. And I kind of want those to feature. Because I love their little pearl tops. So I'm kind of like, I'm scattering stuff. That's what I'm doing. So I've got a couple of little pins there. Don't want them so cross that they look like the scissors. A little bit offset. And then I've got my needle and all of that thread. And I'm wondering if I can't kind of like drape the twine on the card and glue it in position and it be kind of like threaded into a button. to go off on the sentiment like that so I'm going to run away and glue that very similar to how you can see it and I'll be right back okay so I've been and played and stuck everything down and I did only use one needle but I did add an extra button so let's see if we can have a good old close-up oh that's not bad so there's the little scissors there's the black screw top <laughs> top not trop top on the top of the embroidery frame there's that little needle threader Ooh, i do love those things there's that gorgeous little thimble with that beautiful detail and that white foam pad behind it looks quite nice there's those two little pins with their pearls on there's that i love that sentiment you have to tell me if it's my original or if I've uh, remembered it from somewhere else. And there's that threaded needle to the button. And I glued the twine down onto the card as well as the needle. There is the seam ripper and the other two buttons. But what a pretty little card. So we have taken a Valentine shaker, which of course can be cute and sweet and we've turned that into a card that can be used at any time of the year whether it's a thank you a birthday or for valentine or just for a friend who loves sewing you know just a hello card absolutely love it love all those details <laughs> love that thimble Look, i could almost get my finger into that yeah love it right I thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have an absolutely awesome day. And as usual, all links below. Bye.